back. It's me, Tara, Mud Creek Stitcher from Central Nebraska, and I am shockingly, can I, I can't even say shockingly, I'm shockingly here uh, for a video in two weeks. Look at me go. Um, or don't. So it is, I just looked it up, I actually looked up. It is November 12th, and it is my 20th video, and that is a miracle to me and amazing and I just once again I know everybody does this because I, I watch like I have told many times I watch tons of floss too and everyone is the same thank you thank you to all of you who stop by who watch who take a moment thank you so much you are just appreciated you're very appreciated um, making friends i'm getting relationships and i get to see awesome stitching just through connection um thanks to something as crazy as a computer you think about it you go back in time you know when i was in high school um we still learned how to type on a typewriter our freshman year who all remembers typing class huh my teacher ate donuts while we were doing it and i was always mad like that's not fair we don't get to eat now that i'm a teacher i'm like oh no it's so fair she deserved a donut after everything we put her through but anyways um you know things have changed the computers i remember my senior year the typing class was half typing uh, typewriters I can do that typewriters and the other half of the room was the brand new Apple Macintosh computers Ooh, you know the big TV monitors and the huge boards um, and just was like wow that's weird and then I was chatting with somebody not too long ago a couple months ago I guess that is a while ago doesn't seem like it about how I still remember I went to UNL um, Huskers, home of the Huskers in Lincoln, how the first computer labs were put in the dorm rooms. And I didn't know how to work a computer and I had to be trained how to put in a floppy disk. So things have definitely changed in a very short amount of time because now we all carry a computer in our hand. And I remember thinking, you know, 15 years ago, this isn't even possible. Wow. Yeah. So thanks to technology, we can use it for good, like stitching and sewing and friendships. So yay. Yay for that. Um, I don't even know what I'm talking about that. So anyways, thank you viewers. Thank you for stopping by and like and subscribe if you're enjoying what you see. And if not, well, you'll find somebody you like because there's a ton of great stitchers out there. So today will be kind of a short little video. I just wanted to catch up, show what I'm working on, which is not a ton, just because, you know, I'm working full time. It ruins all of our stitching lives. We all agree, right? And just share a few other things that I am planning. Um, just update on the farm. Praise the Lord. My husband is uh, done uh with harvest um our harvest where you just got to help finish up some neighbors because they do custom harvests um, we do custom harvest with them and trade machinery and stuff back and forth so they are almost done um god's definitely let the weather cooperate because when we got that snow i was like oh boy i don't know but it's you know, nothing no moisture nothing so they've been able to get things done i do have some heifers in my cornfield now because once the corn gets picked, electric fence goes up, and here come the cows, and they love to eat it. My husband's had me on high alert to watch my dog in case she would scare the heifers and make them run away. Oh, no, they ignore her. She tried to get one to play with her, but they just mm, they don't care about her. So it's fun to see the nice fluffy uh, heifers out front and walking around and uh, my chickens, they're doing really good. They've got an attitude. They are uh, escaping their chicken run fence. They're pecking at the... We have just these zip ties because it was a kit for the chicken run. And they're breaking the zip ties because they have sharp little beaks now. And so I'm going to have to wire them in. So this morning, I was like, I'm going to go for a walk. I stepped on the scale. Don't, don't get me started. I should never stepped on the scale. There's a reason pants don't fit, but that is beyond the point. And don't you dare worry about yourself. You eat that donut, you're fine. Um, so anyways, I went ahead and 
was going going to go for a walk, which I did, but when I stepped out on where we have a dirt road, very busy dirt road because it's hunting season right now, and there's my chickens on the road. I'm like, what the heck? Maybe my husband let them out? I don't know. No, they got out of a hole in the fence, little stinkers. I'm calling them little turkeys because they're acting like turkeys because we used to have turkeys when we were first married, and turkeys, mm. So tried to chase them off the road, but just looking out my window, I have a feeling they're back on the road. Mm. What do you do? They're chickens, and they are not chicken. They're not afraid to cross the road. So I know, brings back the joke, right? So I'm going to share my whips, works in progress. Um, I don't... I have not worked on a lot. As I promised two weeks ago, I have spent a huge chunk of time trying to finish the Christmas list. So let me pull out the pattern. This is probably one of the last times, probably in my next video will be the last time I pull it out. There it is. It is Silver Creek Samplers, the Christmas list. I fell in love with it when I watched Lori Holt and Kimberly Jolly, Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I don't know if Lori was on there. I don't think she was on there. But, you know, she always types in and talks and stuff. She did a color conversion. It is beautiful. I love it. This is beautiful. But I am so drawn to those colors that Lori did because Lori's fantastic. Lori Holt. If you don't know her, you better find out about her. She's amazing. And I've been going in back and watching all of her floss tube videos because she only has like 18 or 20 of them. And like I said two weeks ago, I did not appreciate when I was a new come back to stitching stitcher what she was doing. It's true because now I'm like, oh, I need everything she's sharing right now. Tons of Brenda Gervais. And I did not appreciate Brenda Gervais when I first started, but now I'm just like, what is wrong with me? So, of course, I've been starting to collect Brenda Gervais. Um, so, anyways, here's my cute little needle minder. Um, if you've not gone to Etsy and found the Mad for Needle Minders, you need to. Isn't that just cute? Doesn't this just take you back as a kid and the golden rule books? Mm, I love those things. Okay, so here it is. Let me, I didn't take it out of the Q-snap because I plan to get this done. I mean, like, in the next day and a half to two days I hope unless you know the rapture hurricane whatever and I'm sorry it's it's not um, ironed but I think you'll still enjoy it like me oh it's so pretty <laughs> Woo -hoo! isn't that gorgeous Oh, I love it. And there's so many mistakes, but you don't know. And I'm not going to tell you because you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. Slowly. Isn't that just adorable? Oh, don't you love when you pull something out and really just look at it for a while, whip or whatever? Isn't that the best feeling? Look at that. It's so cute. Oh, and I'm almost, almost halfway done with the baby Jesus. I do think I want to slip a cross in there somewhere. I just don't know where yet. So there it is. It's been worked on since July. And I want it done. I am dead serious. I was dead serious when I said it. And I'm still, well, I'm not dead. I, I mean, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Just get a little worked up here. Just get a little worked up. So there it is. And the back is horrible. See my messy back? Who cares, right? Some people have amazing backs. And I honor you. I honor you. Um, I love it. I am not that person. I also heard, well, I didn't hear it. I read it in one of those cross-stitch groups. I'm in a person said that they must be an amazing stitcher. That's all I got to say. But they took their piece to get framed and the framer framed it backwards, backwards. You know what that tells you? Her back was immaculate. And so I'm like, see, I don't have that problem. That's not going to happen to me. My, they know the difference. 
Oh, they know the difference. So anyways, I am so excited to get this done. I keep showing it on Facebook, on my Mud Creek Stitcher page. I am sure everyone wants to kill me and they are over it, but I will continue to make all those beautiful women suffer as I get excited about finishing it up. Thank you, Julie. You're such a great contributor. Um, there's several of you. Inger, thank you so much. I just love reading all the stuff. Okay, and there's many more. Kathy, thank you. Francis, thank you. Anyways, okay. So that's one almost finish. I'm so excited. Obviously, you can tell. And then um, the next whip, I'm just trying to keep it all together. Keep it all together. I did it. I mean, I. it's not done. But... I never thought, I mean, a month ago, I'm like, I'm never doing this thing again. It is going to be a UFO, and I never want to look at it again. But then I brought it out again. I'm just now, I mean, I'm just, I'm in the trenches now. This thing will be finished. I'm in the trenches. I want it done. I want to see it. I want to hang it up. It's beautiful. So it is this happy morning, if you didn't see it by Plum Creek Stamplers, Plum Street, not Plum Creek. I'm reading Little House on the Prairie to the kids right now. So, yeah, Plum Street Samplers. I see that she, uh, Paulette Stewart, has been at, um, was it Needlework Press Hunter Retreat that she was there? Very jealous. Wish I could go to all that fun stuff. But I have the front of the barn done. I'm going to take this whole thing out. So it will remind me to appreciate how much I did get done. Oh, I lost my needle. Nope, found it. There it is. This is another needle minder, Mad for Needle Minders, that I got oh, a few months ago. Isn't that cute? Fall Harvest Moon, Autumn Leaves, Pumpkin Spice, Scarecrows, Hay Ride, Hay Rides, Apple, Apple Pie cider apple cider apple pie got it i think that's really cute and this piece honestly it gives it can be anything that hangs up year round it has a fall vibe it has a summer vibe um maybe not a winter vibe but i would still hang it up in the winter time all right i'm taking it up hold on wait for it wait for it it's coming slowly um, it is on 14 count. I was scared in January to try anything smaller than 14 count. Now I'm on to 18 count, guys. 18. I never thought I would do that, but I am there. All right. It's all wrinkled because I am still working on it, but I want to look at this whole thing. All right. I got the front of the barn done. Yay. Yep. Look at all those wrinkles. So, as you can see in the corner, I'm starting the side. That's when I gave up. I was like, I can't do anymore. But, oh, that's the needle I had stuck in. I got it done, and it's all wrong. Tons of mistakes, but you don't care, and I don't care. It is going to be very big, because it is 14 count. Um, is it the Garnet Stitchers? I just found them. Um, is it Kathy? She's doing this right now. And of course hers is beautiful, but much smaller count. It's much smaller than mine, but that's okay. Cause I already have the wall in mind. I'm going to get this thing framed and where it's going to go. So I'm getting there, but I have learned something about myself. I don't like to do great big buildings and I have picked several stitches. There's a lot of fill in with buildings. So I'm just going to have to suck it up put my big girl pants on, I suppose. Mm. Although my big girl pants are kind of tight. So, anyways, I will just slip this off to the side and put it back together later. So that is my other whip that I'm just like, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it. I got all the thread. There's no excuse. And then one more whip. It actually is a new start because I got Starbucks done and I shared that last time. So I'm like, well, I deserve a new start after all that. So, what do I mean after that? It was an enjoyable stitch. So I have started House on Blueberry Hill. 
And I showed this last time. I said I was going to start it, and it did. I found my thrill. Do -do -ba -do -ba -do. Home, Blueberry Hill. There it is. And that song comes into my head every time. And I did do all called for colors. I am so happy I did. Uh, and you can see the size. It's not going to be huge. It's just right, honestly. So I am stitching it on. I did a bunch of dyeing I showed you last time. I am. Did I show you my dyeing? D Y E I N G. Not. Um, I don't know if I showed it or not. I dyed a bunch of fabric. I was having a ball. I was playing with color and all kinds of stuff. Uh, my husband was disappointed though because he's like, I saw pots and pans and out and and boiling and and I thought, ooh, maybe she's making something yummy with frosting. And then I see you're wearing rubber gloves and dyeing things and like, mm -hmm. so he was highly disappointed. He's fine, obviously. Okay, so I'm doing coffee tea dye. No, it's not coffee tea dye. I writ dyed with two different colors on this fabric. Then I submerged it into coffee dye, into the coffee um, dye, whatever, you know, instant coffee, and baked it. All of it was according to Priscilla, uh, her instructions, Fat Quarter Shop. And this is as far as I've gotten. Here, I want to show the threads. Here are the beautiful flosses aren't those pretty and then here is my fabric and that's as far as I got and another needle miner from uh, mad for minders this one cracks me up I love it and then I'm gonna just put the colors right there back up a little bit can you see them all so classic color works and weak dye works and this is uh this was 16 count Ada that I dyed. I used two different red dyes and a coffee and it definitely shrunk and that's why I got um, the 16 count. I'd say it's 17 to 18 count now. But I this is like this went so fast. I'm like I forgot what that's like when things go fast because they keep picking huge projects. So anyways that is my new start and I hope to keep working on it. It's very very cute. And that is something else. I have some spots I know I could hang it. I've got one in my mind right now. So I really want to work on that. So I am, I still, um, once I get the Christmas list done, so plans. Once I get the Christmas list done, oh, and here's my bag. Have you seen this bag? Have I ever shown this bag? Um, it's Lori Holt's cheater cloth. I can't remember the name of the cloth. Some of you are probably shouting it and you know it. And this was made by So My Roots. And I don't know, I got it over a year ago. So I don't know if they're still on Etsy or not, but it's such a cute bag. And this was something I got at uh, Hobby Lobby. Cute sewing machine. I really want to get a featherweight someday. Someday. Those things aren't cheap though. Okay, so anyways, back to plans. Plans. I hope to finish the Christmas list tonight. I hope. And then I have decided, because um, every morning I work, I have worked on the Christmas list pretty much since July. And that has worked for me. It's only a half an hour to an hour, but I got it done. Well, almost. And so I think what I'm going to do is start working, working on my Hawker and Hollows. Because I have two. I've got, I went ahead, I'm going to do the Autumn Hawker and Hollow. I don't have it, darn it. Um, it's out in the living room. I won't get up and get, should I get it? I'm going to get it. Hold on. I'll be right. Okay, I'm back. Found everything. Okay, so what I was trying to say, and then I stopped and got lost in thought and etc. Um, is I think in the mornings, I don't know for how long, but I am going to dedicate my time to Hawker and Hollows because um, I still have this one, of course, and I have started the first block. Sorry about my nails. I ripped my nail polish off again. I gotta quit ripping nail polish off. But it's just so tempting. Okay. Yeah, that might be a little weird. But, you know. 
So this is where I'm at. I'm not taking it out of the Q-snap because I'm lazy. This is the first block. And that's where I'm at, working on the peacock. And this is a 16 count, I think cream and honey, or cream and milk and cream, or sugar and honey. I don't know. Milk and cream? Something with milk or cream from Vibranolin. So hold it back, and then you can see the color of the fabric a little better. So I think, I mean, slowly but surely, I'm going to purchase, because these are the NPI silks I'm using, and they're not cheap. Let's be honest, they're not cheap. So I'm going to do just a little at a time, because the next block is definitely a big one that I want to do. I think I have enough of the dark, I don't know what number MPI it is, but to do the border at least, try and get the border, and then I could cut my fabric down just a little bit, which would be nice, and work on that. So slowly but surely, I hope to in the mornings. We'll see. As we know, things always change. And then I went ahead after watching Lori Holt, because I went back and been watching her videos, watched her work on her autumn at Hawk Run Hollow, and I was, I didn't understand what it meant way back when I first started watching Lori, but then I found Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, and she showed her autumn at Hawk Run, and I watched that how many years ago, watching her work on it, and so... I finally did it because I have seen more people who have done it or finished it or bought it and oh my goodness. So I plan to start this one soon as well. I am doing the Shepherd's Bush conversion. I um, watched another Flosstuber I love, Jessica Sweetwater Stitcher. She made 10,000 su subscribers, which is awesome. So congratulations to her. Um, she's just fantastic. But anyway, she uh, talked about the Shepherd's Bush conversion. And watching the Lori Holt video from 2020, she talked about the Shepherd's Bush conversion. So I emailed Shepherd's Bush, and it's on its way shortly um, and it's going to be a lot cheaper than doing the NPIs, and I don't want to do just DMC. I just, I just don't want to. I don't want to. And so it's very affordable, what I have chosen to do for me. And the fabric came in for it. Let me see if I can find it. I was very excited when I saw it. Nope. Hold on. Here it is. I'm very excited. Oh, shoot. I got more things again. <laughs> Here it is. I got a fat half, and it is 18 count, right? Oh, uh, it doesn't say. Does it say? Yes, it does. It's 18 count. I was about to have a slight heart attack. 18 count, fat half, fiber on a whim, dunes. It is dunes. A 36 by 28 piece. So there it is. Ooh so pretty way better than what I can do dying but I'll still try and do my own sometimes look at that oh it's gonna look beautiful beautiful and I'm not doing the Halloween thing I don't I'm not a Halloween person I love the idea of my granddaughter trick-or-treating which she did and came which was adorable but uh yeah not for me plus it's two less blocks woohoo so i hope to start this i've seen so many floss tubers pull up, pull it out and say i'm gonna do it and i am joining that lovely group of ladies that are doing it and then i went ahead and purchased another hawk run hollow because i've always loved it you know i'm just I'm just like i'm gonna get it i know they're huge i know they're gonna take forever okay i know i accept this but I got the farms of Hawk Run Hollow as well. Because, you know, I live on a farm. I grew up on a farm. Why wouldn't I want the farms of Hawk Run Hollow? So this is another one I hope to start. Not right away, though. Gonna, gonna see if I can't advance a little bit on my Christmas one and my autumn one. And if I can, then... I will reward myself with this. So there we go. Very excited. And this 
The list is surprisingly small compared to the other two hawk runs. Pretty small. Not that big. So I may do it in MPIs. May not be too bad. We'll see. So those are my thoughts. Um, I hope to get the autumn one started as soon as I get, get in the floss. I hope to, boom get that thing going because I have waited for so long and put it off. I'm like, oh, I don't need it. I don't need it. Nope. I need it. I need it right now. So there you go. And then there is one more start. I hope to start today. Haha. <laughs> start. I hope to start today. And that was um, the Lord's Prayer. I'm just trying to get these back where they go. The Lord's Prayer. Once again, I saw uh, Lori Holt doing this, um, her very last Floss Tube video. She has shown some progress, and it's beautiful, and I was like, oh, I need to do it. I don't have a Sabbath stitch. I want a Sunday stitch, something that I just devote to God. So here it is, the Lord's Prayer. It is by Leela Studio. Love Leela Studio. And I know I've shown it. It is based off this original sampler. She based it off of that and pulled some motifs and stuff from it. Here is my fabrics ready to go. Coffee tea dyed by me. I think, wait, this way? I don't know. Coffee tea dyed by me. I'm going to do it on that. And here are, I haven't even, I do not have them ready yet, but here they all are. All the DMCs. Yep. So I'm just doing all DMCs because it says a Verisoi or DMC. And I'm just like, well, I'm doing that Shepherd's Bush conversion. That's enough money spent. So there we go. Oh, I think it's going to look really nice. Sometimes you just want the NPIs in the Verisoi. And sometimes you're like, I'm going to have to be picky. So I'm like, okay, I need to be picky. And so, not that I'm diminishing the Lord's Prayer, because I think, because Lori's looks beautiful. I think she, she's doing the Avera Swaths. They're, they're beautiful, but this look beautiful, DMC. DMC is beautiful. Love it. Okay, so I hope to start this tonight. But I hope to get the other thing done. Oh, and one more thing. So, okay, I know I keep saying it a billion times, but I'm going back and watching all Lori Holt's floss tubes. And she shared this as her Sabbath stitch and had gotten it done. I don't know, her first or second one, it was already done. Barbara Anna Designs, All Creatures Great and Small. Lori's is gorgeous. She did change the reds and the greens a little bit. She does talk about that. It's so pretty. And I'm just like, okay, one of these days, this is coming one of these days and another one it doesn't have that many colors so i don't think it'll be too bad so i hope to do that one of these days okay then if that's not enough i have another start i want to do and it's this one yay blackbird designs feast of friendship once again saw Lori holtz in her videos her and christy crosshatch quilt like in 2020 worked on it together and they both have it hanging in their homes and they put each other's initials so cute so anyways i have met a stitchy friend and she and i have been in contact and we are going to meet together to do this um we're going to make a plan uh i don't i don't know we're going to meet this week and hash it out and talk about it but we talked about how we're going to dice it up and make assignments Possibly for each month or each week. We haven't hashed it all out yet, obviously. And I just asked her if she would mind if I invited you guys to join us. And if you want to, um, go out and get yourself a Feast of Friendship. And we will share uh, how we're going to divvy it up and do our little assignments. So that way we feel like we're accomplishing something. And I hope she and I can get together and stitch it once in a while and just... Yeah, we've been getting to know each other and just having nice chats. It's been really great. Just finally meeting a stitchy friend. Yay! So there you go. And of course, it's perfect for Thanksgiving time. 
and so many people have done it and it's so cute it does call for anchor threads and color color cl classic color works fancy floss that's the best way to say it and gentle art gentle art threads and classic color works i probably will do the called for but i'm going to talk to my friend and we'll see okay so you're welcome to join us on this and make it a feast of friendship stitch whenever you feel like along or you're, you can follow the assignments with us whatever you want to do so as i know more i will let you guys know okay and uh the last thing i want to share before the bible portion is that I am doing a flossiversary uh, in the next couple weeks, November 27th. I had to go back and look. I did my very first video last year, 2022. Yeah, 2022. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to do a flossiversary and hopefully release one on November 27th. And I'm going to be doing some giveaways. So uh, you definitely want to watch several things I want to give away. There will be a slight focus on Plum Street Samplers, just so you know. Oh, and I forgot one more thing. I did sign up for the Jingle Ball, and I got my little box of goodies. It was all packaged very cute. Oh, sorry. I signed up for the Jingle Ball. That is December 1st. I'm even taking the day off. That's how serious I am about it. It's all virtual. It's all online. It's $10. But I went ahead and signed up for a class uh, with Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery and got this cute little package of goodies. You do pay for it, just so you know. But still, goodies. And then um, I'm supposed to have a little ornament stitched up ready to go. Or you could be stitching on it while you watch the class. And that will probably be me. I'll probably be stitching on it while I watch the class. So that was fun. Let's see. I got late. I've never gotten Lady Dot Creates finishings. Isn't that cute? I got that. I got a cute finishing fabric. And just some different stuff for finishing. And then there was a gift of the needle minder. Isn't that cute? Cute little needle minder. So I'm excited just to participate talk to other stitchers. There's no way I'm going to have those ornaments done because I have way too much stuff I want to stitch and going on. I'm really trying to focus on things I want to hang up in my house year round. Um, when I do my anniversary, I'm going to share my, all my Christmas fully finished and I laid them out on the table for me. You know, I'm a slow stitcher, but even then my husband's like, wow. I'm like, yeah, we can tell what holiday I love. So anyways, that is it. That's a wrap, people. So the next portion is the Bible portion. Um, thank you all for sticking around, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again. Okay, so this last part is the Bible portion. Um, those who have been with me the whole time, for a whole year almost now, um, know that I am very uh, much a Christian, um, when I say that, I am a true believer in Christ, that he is real, that he is true, and that he saved my life. Um, he has saved my husband's life, my daughter's life, my son-in-law's life, my son's life, and so on and so forth. Um, Jesus is real. The more people try and prove him wrong, try to prove he's not real, um, it never works, and they end up becoming Christians themselves. So, uh, I, at my very first video, I shared my testimony and story about how it all came about. And if you want to go back and see that, you certainly can and um, just revisit that. But it just boiled down to broken family, broken home, broken life, and realizing um, there's only one way to be fixed, and that is accepting Christ repenting and asking him into your heart so that's what I did all those years ago and you know it is true about the peace that passes understanding with everything going on and the horribleness of the wars with you know Ukraine and Russia and Israel Hamas and all that stuff um, you know, 25 years ago, I'd have been in a panic and I would have been freaking out and I would have been like, why did we have children? We should not have brought children. I mean, I can hear my old self right now. 
But now I'm like, you know, God's in control. The more I read the word, the more I realize he's in, const in control. He makes his good work in spite of us. Um, it's, it's fine. It's going to be fine. You know, Jesus made very clear we're going to suffer. There's going to be bad things. And, you know, God didn't even save his own son. You know, Jesus went through a horrendous death just for us. And he is the example. And, you know, it's better to be out of the body and with the Lord than to be in the body and in the world. And it's, you know, it's hard to understand. But when you're a Christian and you study the word and you read it and the spirit opens the word to you, the more and more it helps. It calms you and you, you're, you work hard to try and see what that means. And the Bible does a great job of pointing us to that, obviously, because it's God speaking to us. Okay. So I'm in Matthew, Mark, Luke right now. And I just got done with chapter 11. Chapter 11? Yes. Um, no, yep, chapter 11. Sorry, just skip chapter 11 in Luke. And I'm looking in the NLT Bible. Um, one of my good friends and former co-workers, she gifted this to me after the death of my mother, wrote me a beautiful note, and I'm going to hang on to this forever, probably. Um, well, I mean, if somebody needs a Bible, I'll, I'd probably give it to them. But you know what I mean. So anyways, in my heart. I will hang on to it in my heart. Um, so anyways, I was in Luke chapter 11. And it's about Jesus teaching. Let's see. Chapter 11. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those. And talks to them about prayer and then about them accusing him of healing a guy, a mute guy, which was a big deal, and said, you know, well, it's because of Beelzebub, which would be Satan. And he's just like, no, that's not how it works, and kind of gives him a whiplashing. So in this section, you know, Jesus is really hard on the Pharisees, the teachers, the pastors, who should be teaching, teaching God's law correctly, but instead they're very much worried about themselves and how much money they can make. So that is kind of the um, chapter where I'm at today. But today in church, I'm veering off, today, today in church, God's just really put it on my heart about the three crosses. Um, in, in church, there was a song, I'd never heard it before, I can't remember the guy's name, about the three crosses. And then I started to think about while the song was going, I should have been, and I was paying attention to the song, but the meaning of the three crosses, I, I have a feeling there's so much more meaning to it than we can understand right now, not until we're with Christ in heaven. But it, and is this how it's for you guys? It just dawned on me. It was like, duh. And the song was about the man in the middle, Jesus, the middle cross, right? There's three crosses and the Bible tells us he's in the middle. And I can't remember if it's the man on the right that's hung with him. Or the left. I think it's the man on the right. Now I gotta look. Now I gotta find out. Let's see. Um, I don't know if it's here. It is. Um, it doesn't say which side in Luke that the man is on. I thought he was on the right, and I'm wondering if another gospel says that. And maybe you can find out and message me and tell me. But one of the criminals hanging beside him, Jesus scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes. But this man hasn't done anything wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. So that um, story struck me as I listened to that song, how 
This is so true of all of us. Here you've got Jesus right there dying for you. I mean, once again, I've mentioned how um, even though the Shroud of Turin or whatever, I don't know if I'm saying that right, the Shroud, the thing that Jesus was wrapped in the cloth, how um, allegedly it's been preserved and saved. And so archaeologists who've studied it said uh, just on the front side of the man that is burned into the cloth, there's 600 lashes. So that tells you what it was like to be crucified. And if Jesus had that many lashes, 600, 600 front, 600 on the back, you know, wow. And of course, what do we know about man? The number six is man. And if you didn't know that, it's in Revelation 6. It's in the Old Testament. 6 is the number of man, but 7 is the number of God, perfection. So anyways, what veered off. Um, but Jesus is perfection. He is the 7. He is in the middle. And one man chooses to reject him. And one man chooses to follow him. One man chooses to ignore everything he's heard because everybody knew about Jesus. Everybody knew, obviously, because this man said, you know, go ahead, save us. He knew the miracles he'd done. John says the miracles are in the thousands. Everyone knew. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, all of them, they knew. There was no denying it. And yet one man next to him chose to deny him still. And one man said, I believe in you and take me with you. Um, and it just makes you think back to the 12 disciples. 11 of them believed in Jesus. One did not. How is this even possible? He was there. Uh, he Judas witnessed everything. He witnessed it all. Judas, um, one pastor I listened to him said, Judas would have received the power when God sent the 12 out to heal people of demons and all that stuff. And yet he still didn't believe Jesus was God. Isn't that incredible? And even now, you know, I think your heart is just so pounded down by sin and the world. It is a battle to scrape out and find the Holy Spirit and just be like, fix my unbelief, Lord, make him real, make him real in me now. So anyways, that just really hit me today. One on the cross rejected him and one went with him and that is really how our world is that's how it's going to be at the end of the world as we know it it's the end of the world as we know it you know um but i am so excited though when christ does come back you know even if i'm already dead and with him or if it's the rapture and it happens now i'm excited for uh the millennial kingdom and if you've not read ezekiel you need to read Ezekiel and read about the Millennial Temple. I know there's a lot of churches that are like, no, that's not true. Sorry, read your Bible. Read it again, read it through again, read it through again, and you too are going to realize, oh snap, there's going to be a Millennial Temple. There's going to be a Millennial Kingdom. And there was a verse I shared on Facebook that just really struck me. Um when I was reading it yesterday morning uh, and I put it on Facebook or not Facebook, Instagram. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. It is Psalm 27 verse four. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I can't wait for that. Um, Ezekiel talks, I mean, Psalms talks about how we will all go up. We will go up to Mount Zion. We will go up to the temple. We'll go up to where Jesus sits on his throne and we will be learning from him. He'll be telling us what to do for work. We'll be learning from him. And I just, I mean, I just want to sit there all day at his feet. I may have to shove a few people over, but I want to sit there all day at his feet and just hear his teachings and understand. Because I guarantee you, if his word can pierce your heart right now, imagine looking at him face to face. It's incredible. I am way off everything I thought I would talk about. Mm. That's how it is. Spirit moves. So I hope your heart's been touched by God because I didn't plan to say that. So that's God. Mm -hmm. Glory of God right there. And he's working for you and loving you. All right. 
I am done. I did a Bible study. If you are interested in my Bible study, I did the next day. It's a, it's a glory hallelujah. And uh, my floss too. It's a good day. Things are done. All right. Have a great week. I will see you hopefully for my floss anniversary. Remember, there's going to be some giveaways. Very excited to share. All right. Thanks guys for watching.